Hey guys, Red Dragon here, and today I thought we would take a look at some aircraft carriers in World of Warships. Uh, real quick, I do want to point out that this is the first time I've been in World of Warships in a couple of weeks. It's just been hectic with new job and new all sorts of stuff. I know a couple of you guys have messaged me saying, hey, are you dead? What's up? Are you still alive making World of Warships videos? Any videos? Yes, I'm here. I exist. Everything's cool. Just been busy. So, I figured, why not first, you know, I missed out on finishing the Kaiju missions, uh, a couple other stuff, missed out on the launch of 0 0.5.3, uh, doing a video on that. I've played a little bit, it's just I haven't had the time to play enough to record and then edit and render and upload and blah 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 blah. So I'm back. I figured a couple people have asked me to play aircraft carriers, so I said, sure, let's do it. And I'm at a point where I'm comfortable to say I'm willing to do a video and not completely suck, hopefully. And I'm going to do it in the Bogue, a.k.a. it, well, for me anyway, the floating brick, because it is incredibly slow and incredibly not maneuverable. But... I don't want to go back and buy the Langley because all of those nice, lovely credits I earned uh, through Project R and uh, the Kaiju missions and Ranked are almost, well, not almost gone. They're significantly more depleted than they were before, and I'm trying to save them to buy new ships and new things. So I'm not going to go back to the Langley, but I'm going to play the Bogue because I finally ground my way through the GM FM2 fighters, which are just ungodly slow. Like, there's only a three kilometer difference between it and the fighters I have now, the Grumman F4Fs. But, oh my goodness, it's a, hu it's a huge difference. It is a massive difference. But, I finally got through to the F4F4s, uh, which are not as fast as the F3s, but they have a higher rate of damage and better survivability. So that's always helpful. Uh, so real quick, I figured we'd go through the stats of the Bogue and com briefly compare uh, how, you, how to play aircraft carriers. For, well, obviously much different than other ships, but against each other, for example, American versus Japanese aircraft carriers, there are very huge differences. So I figured we'd touch on that real quick, because this is the first time I've done aircraft carriers on the YouTube. So without further ado, this is the Bogue. It's a big floating brick. Uh, this is a ship from... Real? We can pull it up right here. Do do 1942 is when uh, the Bogue entered service. And this is uh, back when, you know, America had just entered World War II. Pearl Harbor ha had happened the year, be you know, months before. Um, and they basically took old coal ships, or colliers, as they are called. And colliers? Yeah, colliers. I believe it says right there. Built from a tran oh, transport ship. Still. You know, it, they basically took everything off above a certain point on a big transport ship and then slapped a flight deck on top of it uh, and gave it a hangar. So it is a slow ship, but it met the necessity that the U.S. Navy had. of We need ships now because 90% of our fleet is either destroyed, sunk, damaged, or in repair. So that's kind of where, you know, a lot of the U.S. Navy ship, you know, U.S. Navy early aircraft carriers came from was just old, and the Japanese too, where they were just old transport or coal ships uh, refitted uh, for battle. Oh yeah, this 1922, this was, wow, eat my own words, the Hosho is the first ship to be specifically designed and built as an aircraft carrier. It wasn't a coal ship. Yay, internet. All right, so after pulling my foot from my mouth, uh, so yeah, the Bogue. Let's just move on and ignore that that happened. Uh, hit points, 36,500 with a maximum armor thickness of 16 millimeters. Basically, if you get sighted by a ship with guns, you're probably going to take significant damage and or die. Even more so in the Bogue because it's slow and can't escape. 
But that's the thing with aircraft carriers. You're at the back. Your primary weapon is your aircraft. And as soon as something spots you, and if it's faster than you and has range on you with its guns, you're you're gonna start. You're gonna you're definitely gonna take damage, and you're most likely gonna die. Uh, aircraft. Speaking of weaponry, you have three squadrons on the Bogue uh, that you can alternate in various loadouts. You can have the default loadout of two squadrons, which is one fighter, one torpedo bomber. The out the loadout that I have is two squadrons of fighters and one squadron of dive bombers. Or the loadout that I might try, but probably won't be seen in this video, is the attack loadout of uh, torpe one torpedo bomber squadron and two dive bomber squadrons. Um, I don't really like that loadout, or the thought of that loadout, simply because, one, if I was going to have an attack loadout, I'd want it to be primarily uh, torpedo bombers. Two... American carriers, in my opinion, are far better suited for the role of air superiority. They have more aircraft in their squadrons. They have six aircraft per squadron as opposed to the four of equal tiered, you know, the Hosho and uh, the Zui Ho. Uh, so your fighter squadrons are going to have a much, har much harder punch. Plus, they tend to do, I believe, more damage. I believe. Don't quote me on that. Um... So I prefer to use air, American aircraft carriers anyway as the air superiority aircraft carriers. So I'm going to stick with my two uh, squadrons of Grumman F4F uh, fighters. Yes, look at them. And one squadron of Douglas SBD-2 dive bombers because just in case... Well, it's not like I have a choice to get rid of this squadron, but I like it because... If a destroyer gets a little too close, just a little bit too close, uh, you can maybe knock out its engine or set it on fire, do a little bit of damage to it. Or if you spot a ship that's really low health and is kind of being ignored for some reason by your team, you can put it out of its misery with a good bomb strike. Uh, secondary armaments are not worth mentioning in my opinion, but they are two 127mm guns, one on each side of the ship at the stern. They also serve as dual-purpose anti-aircraft guns, but considering the flight deck protrudes above them, their arc of fire is limited to anything below the flight deck, uh, which is kind of crap, in my opinion. But hey, it's better than having nothing. Uh, anti-aircraft defense, you have 27 Orlikon 20mm cannons that are all over the ship. They're just they're low on the sides, high on the sides, in the front, in the rear, uh, all everywhere. Uh, you also have eight dual, yeah, dual 40 millimeter, bo 40 millimeter Bofors. Slow down. And again, the dual purpose uh, 127s. The big, big, big weakness of the Bogue, specifically as as a ship, not counting its aircraft. The big, the big weakness of the ship itself is its speed. It only goes 16.5 knots, which means practically, literally any ship in the game, I believe, I believe any ship in the game can catch up to you. Which is very annoying. Um, so yeah, you can't outrun anything. You have to stand and fight if you get in close combat with an enemy ship, which is not a good thing for you because you only have two really not good <laughs> secondary guns. Um, it took me about 10 minutes to get from one side of the ocean map to the other, going straight east to west, border to border, not corner to corner, not long ways. Yeah, it was bad. Uh, rudder shift time, I mean, it's 9.6 seconds, but if you get to the point where you're dodging and evading dive bombers and torpedoes, you're basically you're basically not in a good position. You're going to die. You're probably going to take at least one of those torpedoes. You're probably going to take at least one of those bombs. It's ba all, all maneuvering is going to do is just lessen the damage you're going to take. It's not going to necessarily prevent it. Sometimes you get lucky. Sometimes I amaze even myself and dodge all the torpedoes. But I'm pretty sure that in this ship anyway, it's more of a, more of a case of the enemy destroyer, enemy aircraft carrier made a bad torpedo drop than I miraculously matrix bullet timed and evaded them all so and 
detectability, I mean, you're an aircraft carrier, 12 kilometer, well, 11.9, okay. 12 kilometer detection range uh, on the surface, you're not, you shouldn't be getting within 12 kilometers of another ship anyway. But in case you do, that's when you're spotted. So that's the Bogue in all her glory. I do want to mention real quick that if you are playing aircraft carriers, make sure you outload your commander with the appropriate skills. They have a whole section. It's basically this column right here. All four of those you should probably have on your aircraft carrier. Uh, you know, rear gun, expert rear gunner for your attack aircraft, uh, dogfight expert for your fighters, aircraft servicing expert gets them in the air faster and gives them a little bit more survivability, and gives and this air supremacy will give you an extra fighter, an extra bomber in each of your fighter and bomber squadrons. So those four, really, really helpful. I can't wait to get these two. Uh, and then if your flight deck's on fire, you can't launch anything, so reducing the risk of fire, also a good one to have. And then in patch 0 0.5.3, they added a couple signal flags, uh, a couple that are really helpful to carriers. They have Victor Lima and India X-Ray, which are increased chance of fire on target with your bombs or main battery guns. Uh, Juliet Whiskey Uno 1, which is an increased chance to causing leaks uh, with your torpedoes or flooding with your torpedoes. Uh, and November, November Echo Seta 7, which is uh, efficiency of air and uh, self-defense armament on aircraft with rear gunners and AA mount effectiveness. So that's and again, also helpful for aircraft carriers. Plus, they added some new ones. Uh, November Foxtrot, you know, all these. I don't think those... Was that 0 0.5.3? I don't know. Anyway, but yeah, those are things you should probably have to help out your aircraft carrier. And let's see if we can get into a battle. Pri I would hope... I hope we get into a battle with uh, Japanese carriers on the other side. I hope I'm the only Bogue and the rest are Hoshos and Zuihos because I can, with this loadout, I can decimate some Japanese aircraft carriers' uh, loadouts. But if we get up against American aircraft carriers, it's basically going to me, be me trying to kill a bunch of enemy fighters before they kill all mine. So without further ado, let's get into battle and see what this uh, floating brick can do. Alrighty, y'all, we are here in our first battle on Solomon Islands, and our enemy has two aircraft carriers, as do we. We have a My Bogue and a friendly Hosho, and an enemy Bogue and an enemy Langley. Um, not what I was hoping was going to happen, uh, but it's what we have to work with. Uh, so let's see what we can do. We are not going to move the aircraft carrier quite yet. And until I find out where my team is focusing their efforts and I'll kind of slot in behind them and follow at a distance. Uh, first things first, let's get our aircraft up in the air. Group, two, maintaining present course. Group two's in the air. We're going to send them on this vector. Try to intercept any enemy torpedo and dive bombers coming down the map this direction. I believe the loadout that the Langley has, I think the Langley only has one, maybe two loadouts. It's either one fighter, two torpedo, or a fighter, torpedo, and dive bomber. So his fighters are not going to be a problem. I mean, they will be, but only one squadron of them. Um, it looks like the friendly Hosho is sending his aircraft up north that direction. Let's send Squadron 3 this direction, give him some support up there, and we'll send our dive bombers to B where their destroyers are likely to show up. There's a dive bomber squadron. That could be from the Langley or the Bogue. The torpedoes could be from the Langley or the Bogue, and the Bogue could have the same loadout. Nope, there's the Bogue. Two fighters and a dive bomber following each other. All right, that answers my question. Let's slot in behind their dive bombers. Squadron 3, I'm going to route you over here to intercept their fighters. So these are the Bogues aircraft. I know this because it's the same loadout I have, two fighters two, and a dive bomber. So the Langley has the uh, upgraded loadout for the Langley, which is a dive bomber, a torpedo bomber, and a fighter. 
So that is good to know. Uh, his fighters are vectoring to find our aircraft carriers, which he obviously spots me just based on distance. He's trying to find where I sent my aircraft. I sent them to the four corners of the universe. Alright, group three. We're going to have you attack the Langley's fighters. I know you guys can dispatch them fairly quickly, because I believe they're just Brewster Buffaloes. His dive... My power almost went out. That was scary. My computer didn't surge, though, so we're fine. I'm on fire. His rear gunners are attacking me. Alright, group two. We shot down a couple of their dive bombers. But we are now engaging their fighters. We're going to move the our aircraft carrier in as an AA platform. Group three. We're going to bring you guys down here to attack and help out. They only have two destroyers that have not been spotted yet. If I spotted them, I would send my... Alright, the Hosho's fighters are coming in to help. My extra squadron of fighters coming in to help. That was not an Group ideal situation. Go get his fighters. Go on. Does he have Grumman F3Fs too? Yeah, it looks our F four Fs, it looks like he does. Let's see if we can catch him. Now, that's a that's a pointless effort. He and I's aircraft have the same speed. Our team has taken the lead. Group three, standing by for instructions. Over. Let's send group three up to intercept the dive bombers and torpedo bombers. Let's send group four up because it looks like the destroyer one of their destroyers is in C. And group two is going to be ready to go here in just a minute with another six fighters. All right, we s destroyers in that smoke screen. It's a Nicholas. Let's make a drop. Let's get group two in the air. There's a lot. Especially in really intense games, there's a lot you have to focus on, and I got a hit on that Nicholas. Didn't set a fire, so I don't get the sunk, but I did dis I did do some damage to him and incapacitate something. Alright, I need to turn around. I forgot that I sent my carrier off in not the correct direction, so we're going to come back this way. It's going to take at least five minutes to do that, so hopefully nothing will try to kill me in that time. Um, which fighter group do I want to go for? This one. That looks like the Bogues fighters, because they are moving much faster than these guys. I don't want to get on a two-on-one again. There's three. Let's send group two to get these guys, group three to get these guys. Now, so we have the two-on-one advantage, not him, or them. Uh, Hosho is sending his torpedo bombers back to his. Come on, get there before he loses another aircraft. Good, 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 good. The Hosho is defending his own aircraft. Good. Commentary is not an easy thing to do in these aircraft carry gameplays because I'm trying to like focus. Alright, let's get his dive bombers done and out of the way. I don't know. I think those are the Bogues just because of the speed that they're moving at. They're, they look more upgraded. Ah, uh, here come fighters. Let's get those guys attacking the fighters. Two on one. But he does have Wyoming anti-aircraft coming up. Wyoming anti-aircraft is not that incredible. Good. Now let's pull you guys back and get you out of the AA coverage there. I could, uh, nope, it's a group of dive bombers, and that's coming from the Langley, looks like, so let's go get those guys. Let's send group four over to attack that Clemson. And I choose to attack the Clemson simply because, well, I could have it attack the St. Louis. Yeah. Let's go for the St. Louis. Bigger target, slower moving target. How are our 
You know what? He's RTBing with those guys. Let's have him attack these Group torpedo two, bombers. Awaiting instructions. You know, I don't I don't like the auto drop for fighters, so I'm not gonna use it. I was gonna attempt to use it to show it off, but you know what? No. Group four. We caused a fire on the St. Louis, which he promptly put out. But hey, a hit's a hit. We did some damage. He wasted a repair. Hopefully someone can get him on fire now that he's gotten some damage done to him. And we are going to start vectoring our aircraft carrier north. I'm not going to make that turn, so we're going to make it a wider turn and start heading north. No north to Alaska. We're going north. The rush is on. There's a New York. I know their Langley is over in here. Here we go. Let's go get those fighters. No, let's go get those dive bombers. His fighters are preoccupied. Come on, shoot him down. Got the clear sky ward, which means I shot down more than something, something of the aircraft. Must be more than 30 aircraft and a certain number percentage of the aircraft in the game, which I did. Group 4 is going to attack that destroyer. Four, get in the air. The nice thing is, dive bombers are fire and forget. I can literally leave and they will return to the ship and do all that on their own. Fighters and torpedo bombers require a little bit more maintenance. Is he landing? Nope, those are attacking. Dive bombers have already dropped. Let's see if we can intercept the torpedo bombers before they get to the Imperator Nikolai over there. Waypoint reached. I think we're going to get to them. And the Hosho sending some in as well. There we go. Uh, did we drop? We did not drop yet. Come on, spot him. Spot him. Spot him. We're flying... If we lose sight of him... There we go. Good. Two fires, two incapacity. That was a good, good strike. Good strike on that destroyer. Alright, let's get up to our fighters. They have, en they have enough ammo to probably shoot down another squadron or something, something. That easiest Slav took a nice hit from us. We'll probably vector the next dive bomber attack to him as well. That's good. We're still going to keep the throttle up and head towards C because we got a bunch of cruisers and a DD heading this direction. Group three, taking fire. Looks like we're going to win this one. Good, good. Alright. Got a little too cocky. The Langley, I think, has lost a good number of his aircraft. I think we shot down most of the enemy's carrier's aircraft, which is good for us. We'll keep them vectored over here. They are under attack, but it's from a Miyogi at range. I'm not too concerned. Group 4, let's get him in the air. That Izia Slav is going to be distracted by the Furutaka. So let's get a dive bomber strike on him. Who knows, maybe we'll get a ship... Nah, we won't get a ship kill. Round's about to end. We could reset that cap, but we're so close to winning, I don't think it's going to matter. No enemy aircraft in the air. We shot down 38 aircraft. And that's the game. Wow, not bad. Not bad at all. Real quick, let me tab out. And tab back in. There we go. So, not bad for an air superiority style game in the Boog. We did a lot of shoot down 100 aircraft. That definitely helped. 
Uh, what else? Team needs air support. Shoot down 20 aircraft. That help. That works. Uh, win a big match. Uh, cause 500,000 hit points of damage. So we did a little bit of everything. We did some damage. We, sh we primarily were anti-air, which we did very well. Um, how are we team score-wise? Top of the team in an aircraft carrier. Which is impressive considering I only got three bomb hits. That comes from shooting down the aircraft. It helps your team a lot. It helps your team more than you know. Um, 93,000 uh, credits. Just about 2,000 XP. 99 free XP. What's our detailed report? I want to see exactly how it all broke down. We, dude, we did 6,400 damage in dive bombing hits, 450 damage in fire because the St. Louis put out its fire right away. Um, we shot down 23 fighters, 9 torpedo bombers, and 6 dive bombers. Um, those 23 fighters, even though they weren't doing damage to ships, that helped our Hosho's uh, torpedo bombers uh, get to the target without dying. And my dive bombers. Um, so yeah, not a bad aircraft carrier game. And again, that's the air superiority style. Uh, if you want to do ship sinking style or ship destruction style, change your loadout. That's the nice thing about aircraft carriers is you can adjust it to what you want to do. If you you know, if you want more squadrons but less of planes per squadron, play the Japanese and you know get really tactical and intricate with how you're how you line up your attacks. If you just want hard-hitting power, go with the American aircraft carriers. But that's kind of my brief thing on carriers. Uh, I might do some more carrier gameplay, maybe with a Japanese aircraft carrier in the future. But other than that, let me know what you want to see. If you, you know, I played aircraft carriers because a couple people suggested, hey, I want to see some aircraft carrier gameplay. I know uh, I've also had requests to play the Turpets again because it's the Turpets and I mean, who doesn't like the Turpets? Um, if there's a specific class of ship or a, a specific nation line of a certain class that you want to see, let me know. You guys can see my uh, my roster of ships at the bottom of the screen. You can t you can see what tier I've reached in what classes and nations. Let me know what you want to see. And Russian cruisers are coming, so that's terribly exciting. And I can't wait to see what Russian cruisers are going to be like. So let me know if you guys want to say anything specific. Thanks for watching this video. And I will see you in the next video that I upload. Peace out.